Welcome to episode 6 of MTB Frame Development. In this series, we show the whole process of how we develop a mountain bike frame. From the first drawings to the complete rideable bike and ready to market. Today, we're going to show you how the CAD data is being transformed into a real part. And for that, we visit our partner, Spantec. Um, a little bit, maybe intro for Spantec. Spantec lives uh, or works in Bielefeld, next to Bielefeld, pretty close by, just a yeah, one and a half hour drive. And um, yeah, we got aware of them when they made the intent one piece fork. So that was pretty impressive work. So we started following them. They started texting on, on Instagram actually. And um, yeah, then they made a head tube for us. And yeah, one thing met the other, Manuel, the engineer who was taking care of the project. Um, yeah, he's also a rider. Met us, he's also riding bikes. And yeah, so there was a lot of same energy. And yeah, I would say, let's go. We take you to Spantec and show you the process. <laughs> Okay, so we arrived at Spantec and let's go check out how the locks are made. Is there anybody? Oh, that must be Robin. Good job. Hi Robin, nice to meet you. Hello. You're welcome, hey. Hi Jack. Hi Manuel, schön dich wiederzusehen. Jetzt bin ich mal gespannt, wie das funktioniert. So, I already arrived in Spantec and sitting with Manuel on the cam table or computer and we show you how he designs the part from this block to the final CNC locked head tube. Okay, but before we continue, Jaco will explain why we chose CNC machining over 3D printing for the locks. So in the times of 3D printing, probably a lot of people are wondering why we don't just uh, go ahead and print this. And uh, I want to give you just some quick numbers. So of course we are machining this out of a massive aluminum piece it's 4.8 kilogram, so a lot of cost of the whole product goes into the sourcing of the raw material. A little bit comes back from the aluminium waste, but it's not really considerable. And uh, the final part is less than 10% of the raw material. It's 377 grams. And um, yeah, if, if you consider this to be printed, we were actually looking at some numbers and had a quotation this printed out of titanium with the same wall thicknesses. Okay, probably we could reduce them slightly, but this would be a 500 euro titanium print and probably a 350 euro aluminium print. So while the aluminium is not even technically uh, as, as strong yet, probably in the, in the future it will be, but uh, right now for a mass produced part, it is absolute nonsense to print. And there's all this deburring and still you have to go on a CNC machine because these surfaces with the tolerance that we need, they don't come out of a printer. So it is a massive process and it is really massively expensive. For everybody who wanna do a one-off, 3D printing is of course awesome. Let's go. Okay, so at first I became the model from you. It looks like this and then I have to think about how I want, um, want to cut off the material to get a finished part. So firstly I start to make a um, raw material block. It looks like this or so it's the same that you hold in your hand before. Mm -hmm. And then I have to think about um, in what so here basically uh, you just leave some material to be able to clamp it? Or yes, can correct? I, perfectly. Okay. You, you can see it in the next um, window. So then I have to think about how I want to, um, and what kind of strategy I want to cut off the material. And mm, this is the okay. area you talked about. There is um, enough the device, material, yeah. then okay. I can, can hold the part. Mm -hmm. And this is the actual machine interior that you are using? Yes, for production. It is, that's okay. the same machine. Perfect. So and you then, can be sure there won't be any unexpected collisions. So yes, great. it's important. You don't want to have crash in your machine. Mm -hmm. It's uh, expensive. It's expensive. <laughs> yes, it is. Right. So and then I start to create some different tool paths to cut off the material. For example, um, I can show you something like that. Here's a roughing path. So firstly, I have to choose um, what kind of material I want to um, take. Here is an end mill diameter of 16. Mm -hmm. And then I create um, 
a cutting area where the tool can work. After that, I'm going to choose some um, cutting speeds or parameters. Okay, so you set up the, the area and the parameters and mm -hmm. the rest is done by the computer or? Yeah, um, almost, yes. Uh, you can, you just have to, to um, set some Grenzen. The boundaries. Boundaries. <laughs> so um, I can do it like here. So I can say, please don't cut in this so that device. is like this safe zone, yeah, right? Yeah, it's oh, a safe okay. zone and I want to have some uh, distance from this part around from three millimeters so yeah. that there is no collision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that uh, sound from the, <laughs> the time when I was working in the CNC shops. Okay. Was like, and somebody got a red face and, and the boss was coming around and, what's up here? Yeah, <laughs> that's no good sound. So, and then I had uh, can set some different cutting parameters. Uh -huh. For example, I can say just cut 10 millimeters in depth mm -hmm. and then I can say uh, you can cut in the sideways from around 85 percent. Mm -hmm. 85 percent of what? It's of, a of the, two diameter? Or? Of the two diameter of mm -hmm. the 16 uh, millimeters. Okay. And um, So it's always better to have the possibility to use a bigger tool basically yes. so it accelerates the whole yes, it speed, is. right? And then I can also say um, just cut the 10 millimeter and when you don't reach it, you can make some stairs. Um, mm -hmm. So I say uh, just cut some stairs in, in a height of 1.5 millimeter. So the more we find the stairs are, the less work for the final finishing touch. For right? the, yeah, for the finishing tool. So you want to find the perfect balance out of uh, roughening and yeah, finishing. Um, and the goal is to, to um, reduce the machine time mm -hmm. and also um, cut the material in a fast time. So here, here you can see the 10 millimeter steps mm -hmm. in, in depth. And after that, it starts to make some stairs like this. And these are the 1.5 millimeters. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So after that, I make it in a fast way. I have all my roughing parts mm -hmm. and at the end the part will look like this. This is our the, um, cut off from the material in the first operation. All right, this all in the first. Uh, and then you have the, to design a tool for the second operation? Yes, correct. Then I have to design a clamping device mm -hmm. and it looks like this. So um, I'm just going to hide this part. Um, here is a cylindrical a cylinder. We um, want to take care of the position from the <coughs> head tube bearings. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we also want to um, take care of the direction of these. Yes, parts. obviously. So, yeah. um, so you can see there is um, a screw mm -hmm. that fix in here. So to um, where the thread comes in handy. Yes. Yeah, and then, then we are, um, can be sure that there is a correct direction to cut off the material from the second mm -hmm. side and then it looks like this this is the second operation here you can see the clamping device mm -hmm. and then you can see how it looks like when the part came from the first operation it looks like this and then i'm going to make the, um, the same two passes as we can see from the first side to mm -hmm. finish the part all right Okay, so here's some really rough operations and then you go to the final operations yes. again. So, um, yeah, probably advice for everybody who want to design something by themselves is uh, use big radiuses, right? Mm -hmm. That you can have like the bigger the tool, the faster the yes. tool can move. Um, is there any other design advice that you would give for, for somebody who would like, let's say, approach you with a similar project? <laughs> um, so if I'm, I'm a machinist and then I'm going to take care if there are some parallel surfaces or something like that and mm -hmm. you don't have any here. All right, so some more flat surfaces are always yes. helpful um, to accelerate the, the, the programming and the machinability. Mm -hmm. All right, that's interesting probably for some viewers here in the video, I guess. <laughs> But that looks like a really cool part. It's not the simplest one, but it's a really cool part. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Thank you. So shall we see some CNC operations or yes. is there anything else? We can go outside editing? and right. take a look. Let's go have a look.
Here we go. Have one top frame. Thank you. Yeah. Let's go. Let's try fast. So we just arrived back in the headquarters. And uh, yeah, we don't have much to test right now, but it's already pretty exciting um, how the carbon tubes fit the lug. And um, yeah, what, what, what's next? Um, we discussed a little bit with the guys from Spantec how we can optimize the, the structure because I find uh, this could have a little bit more of an offset. So here comes a little bit more structure out and will also optimize a little bit more for runtime and also cost in this way. Uh, runtime always saves cost, obviously. And um, yeah, next week we'll probably be busy with uh, designing the, the jig. And um, we also expect to receive all of the CNC parts after they pass the QC um, next week. So probably next week's video will be a complete frame and not just a down tube and a head tube. So stay excited and uh, yeah, let us know in the comments if there's any smart advice because we love to take your smart advice. <laughs> and um, stay tuned for next week. <laughs>